And today, the idea of the session is really to gather and to reflect on the future of work. What we're actually seeing, especially during COVID, is the recognition that organizations, that societies, that institutions need to start looking at individuals as more than economic actors. Mm. That we can't just look at work as you do this amount of work and you get this amount of money. Mm. Because what we've seen is that actually the value of what people mm. are doing can't mm. just be measured through their pay. Mm. Like there's no reason for there to be these huge divides between, you mm. know, like in the same company, if you've got someone earning a billion dollars and you have someone earning like a thousand dollars, then that is illogical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's been very clear during COVID and that makes us really come to that point where I think we need to rethink not just success, not just work, but how do we, how do we think of pay? How do we think mm. of economic structures? How do we think of moving forward so that we have systems, global systems, not just local systems, mm. that are more equal, that are more egalitarian, so people mm. can live fuller lives? Yeah. And it's, it's not an answer, yeah. um, but I think it's a very important question that we need to start disengaging from the idea that actually our value at work, wherever we are, is just purely measured by our pay. Yeah. yeah. You know, in the past, the notion is that, okay, uh, 9 to 5, right? Yeah. Uh, as a boss, it's like, I don't care if there's enough work for you to do for 8 hours, but you come and you sit there yeah. so that I can see that you're there. Yeah. You know? yeah. So sometimes, whatever work that you give them, mm. they finish in 2 hours, but they still are expected to sit there for, for 8, you know? Yeah. Mm. But I think with, uh, with COVID, with working from home, a lot of uh, bosses become more enlightened as well. Yeah. Because if this work can be done in two hours, then fine, spend the six hours with, with your kid, you know, because mm, right. it's the same amount of uh, things that are being achieved. So I think um, that there are a few silver linings to this COVID, actually, I feel. So I used to lead a team of consultants, and, um, you know, at the end of the performance appraisal, I would always ask them, you know, what about me? What, what can I do to be a better boss? Yeah. And one of the years, I'm so lucky that one of the consultants, she says, well, Doug, uh, honestly, uh, to tell you the truth, we don't trust you. And I was, of course, shocked because mm. here I think I'm a nice mm. guy and a good boss and yeah. all that, right? <laughs> and she said, it's because you're so nice and you're so supportive and you're always willing to help us, but we get a sense that you don't give us the more difficult messages and the coaching and, you know, call us out on things we can do better. Yeah. And that was a huge wake-up call for me. Like, it was probably the, maybe the best single moment of, of, mm. of where a kind of failure kind of woke me up a yep. little bit. I wouldn't say I became perfect at it, but at least reminded me that if I really want to be a good boss and I really want to be, you know, trustworthy, mm. I have to say everything, the good, the bad, the not so good, and, mm. and all that kind of thing. So that, that was one for me that was really helpful. Mm. Yep.